Let's graph this piecewise function by first determining where that boundary wall is gonna be, that invisible break in my graph. So it looks like negative two is where something special will be happening. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is on my graph, I'm gonna go on and add a dashed line when x is equal to negative two. Something special should happen at my graph at that point, okay? Let's go ahead and then take a look at the first piece of this piecewise function. Uh, the first piece, we'll just call the top piece, is this x plus three. And so what I'm gonna do, like we did uh, in the previous video when we were just graphing one of these at a time, is I'm going to use an xy table. Even though I can use ideas of slope-intercept form, sometimes the xy table is uh, the best bet to start with these. So I'm going to begin my xy table with including that special uh, boundary value. So I'm going to include negative 2 in my table, but then I'm going to make a note of whether I can or cannot actually have a point there. This time it says for this top piece, x has to be less than negative 2. So I can't actually have a point on the graph, and I'm just going to make a note in my table that I have an open circle when I get to that point. And then I need to pick at least two more values for x so I can graph this line. And it says I have to pick values of x that are less than 2. So values like, I don't know, negative 3 and negative 4 would be great. Okay, anything less than uh, negative 2. From here, I'm going to take those values one at a time and plug them into x into the equation they gave me. You can do this on a calculator, but I think it's easier just to do it in your head. So negative 2 plus 3 gets me an output of 1. Negative 3 plus 3 gets me 0 and then negative four plus three gets me negative one. And so I have three values to now uh, graph to plot this part of my function. So my first value was negative two, one. So I count backwards two spaces and up one. And notice I'm on the wall. And so we made a note of whether we could or could not actually have a point there. And we said we couldn't, so I'm gonna have an open circle, make that really big so I can see that it's an open circle. Uh, my next point was negative three, zero. That's just a point of the line, so it can be small. Uh, and then negative four, negative one is a point down there. And I can keep Keep using slope uh, my slope if sorry if I can get my point where I want it to be there we go I can keep using uh, the slope to find more points but I think I have enough to kind of sketch that in there and so there's part of my piecewise function that ray right there okay let me switch colors and we're gonna move on to the other piece of this the other piece of this function is this part of the line right here negative 2x minus 3 so once again I'm gonna make an XY table and I'm gonna include that uh, special boundary level to start with. So I'm gonna include negative two and make a note of it this time that I can be equal to negative two this time. So I'll have a filled in circle when I plot this point. And then I have to pick two numbers that are bigger than negative two, or at least two numbers bigger than negative two. So how about negative one and zero? That would be great. Any two values are fine. All right, so again, let's one at a time, plug those values in for the X down here this time and find out what my output is. So negative two times negative two is four and I subtract three and end up with a point of uh, negative 2, 1. Notice they're the same point this time. That's a total coincidence. It does not always happen that way. Uh, plugging in the other x values, you can pause the video or maybe you've already done it or can figure it out real quick in your head. Uh, but there's my other two output values. So let's plot these two or these three points and see what the other part of this piecewise function looks like. So applying the point negative 2, oh look, I'm on the wall, up 1. Oh, I've just said I have a filled in circle. Total coincidence that these points are at the same location. So this time, actually that whole hole we had in the graph ends up getting filled. So there is no hole in the graph this time. I have a point everywhere. Uh, my next point was negative one, negative one. So right down here. And then my third point was zero, negative three. And again, you can use ideas of slope and and slope intercept form, but it doesn't always work. You have to be kind of careful with these boundary lines. Uh, I can draw this other part of my graph in there, uh, and then there we go. There is our piecewise defined function. It's made up of two different functions. Kind of looks like an absolute value graph, but a little lopsided. Uh, these bottom two questions, real quick, we can answer those. Is the domain all reals? In other words, no matter where I go on the x-axis, whether I go left or right, is there a graph above or below me? Uh, can I get an output for every input? I plug in. Uh, the answer is yes. There's no breaks. There's no gaps in the graph. And then the next question is the graph or is the function continuous? Means could you draw this without picking your pencil up off the paper? Basically, is what it means. Uh, and the answer that this time is yeah. You can draw this just fine without picking up your pencil.